Ever wondered how ancient wisdom could transform your modern life? Discover the five powerful ways Musonius Rufus can teach you self-discipline today. Musonius Rufus was a renowned Stoic philosopher from ancient Rome, and his teachings on self-discipline are incredibly relevant even today. Let's dive into his unique perspective and see how we can cultivate self-discipline in our daily lives. Musonius Rufus, a Stoic philosopher, believed the key to a fulfilling life lies in mastering yourself, not in the accumulation of possessions or the pursuit of fleeting pleasures, but in the discipline of the mind and the control of one's own being. He argued that we are all engaged in a constant battle, a struggle against our own impulses and desires. The siren song of instant gratification calls to us constantly, urging us to choose the easy path, the path of least resistance. But this path, Rufus warns, is a dangerous one. It leads to a life lived in reaction, a life where we are slaves to our whims and desires. True freedom, he argued, lies in resisting these temptations, in learning to say no to the fleeting and yes to the enduring. This is the essence of self-control, the cornerstone of a disciplined life. Think about the things that tempt you, the things you know you shouldn't do but find yourself doing anyway. It might be reaching for your phone when you know you should be working, indulging in that extra slice of cake, or scrolling through social media when you promised yourself you'd read a book. These are the little battles we fight every day, the battles that determine the course of our lives. And just like a warrior trains their body for physical combat, we must train our minds for this internal struggle. This training begins with awareness. We must first become aware of our impulses, of those moments when desire begins to pull us off course. Pay attention to your thoughts, your feelings, your physical sensations. What triggers these impulses? What are the things you tell yourself to justify giving in? Once we are aware of our patterns, we can start to interrupt them. This is where the real work begins. It's about consciously choosing a different path, a path aligned with our values and goals. It's about delaying gratification, not because we want to deny ourselves pleasure, but because we understand that true satisfaction comes from mastering our impulses, not being ruled by them. This is not to say that we should strive to become emotionless robots. We are humans, after all, capable of experiencing a wide range of emotions. But self-control is not about suppressing our emotions. It's about choosing how we respond to them. It's about acknowledging our feelings, accepting them for what they are, and then deciding how we want to act. Remember, self-control is not something we achieve overnight. It's a practice, a lifelong journey of self-mastery. In the heart of Musonius Rufus's philosophy lies a seemingly paradoxical idea. To truly live, we must embrace discomfort. He challenges us to confront our fears, to step outside the confines of our comfort zones, for it is in these moments of challenge that we discover our true potential. Think of the times you've avoided something because it made you uncomfortable. Maybe it was speaking up in a meeting, joining a gym, or finally starting that project you've been putting off. These moments of hesitation, these feelings of discomfort are not signs to retreat, but signals pointing us towards growth. Rufus believed that by actively seeking out discomfort, by willingly putting ourselves in situations that challenge us, we build resilience. We develop a mental toughness that allows us to face life's inevitable obstacles with courage and determination. This doesn't mean we should go looking for unnecessary suffering. It's about recognizing that growth rarely happens in our comfort zones. It happens when we push ourselves, when we test our limits, when we dare to do the things that scare us a little. Imagine a muscle. It doesn't grow by staying the same size and weight. It grows when it's challenged, when it's pushed to its limits, when it's forced to adapt and become stronger. The same is true for our minds and spirits. Start small, identify one area of your life where you've been playing it safe, where you've been letting fear hold you back. It could be anything from learning a new skill to having a difficult conversation. Once you've identified it, make a plan to take one small step outside your comfort zone. The key here is to be consistent. Don't expect to become comfortable with discomfort overnight. It's a process, and like any worthwhile pursuit, it requires patience, persistence, and a willingness to embrace the journey. As you begin to embrace discomfort, you'll notice something interesting happening. The things that once seemed daunting, the challenges that once filled you with dread, will start to feel less intimidating. 
you'll develop a quiet confidence and knowing that you can handle whatever life throws your way. Remember, the goal is not to become immune to discomfort. It's about changing our relationship to it. It's about recognizing that discomfort is not something to be feared, but an opportunity for growth. The liberation of living simply. In a world obsessed with accumulation and excess, Musonius Rufus offers a radical alternative, the liberation of living simply. He believed that true happiness is not found in amassing material possessions, but in cultivating inner peace and contentment. Imagine for a moment the weight of our possessions, not their physical weight, but the mental and emotional burden they can carry. The constant need to acquire more, the pressure to keep up with the latest trends, the fear of losing what we've worked so hard to accumulate, these are the chains that bind us to a life of dissatisfaction. Rufus challenges us to question this relentless pursuit of more. He asks us to consider what truly matters in life. Is it the size of our homes or the warmth of the connections we share within them? Is it the car we drive or the experiences we have along the way? Is it the number of clothes in our closets or the confidence with which we carry ourselves? Living simply is not about deprivation. It's about making conscious choices about what we allow into our lives. It's about letting go of the things that weigh us down, the things that clutter our spaces and our minds so that we can make room for what truly matters. Start by taking stock of your surroundings. What do you own that brings you genuine joy that adds value to your life? And what are you holding on to out of habit, obligation or the fear of letting go? The process of simplifying can be incredibly liberating. As you declutter your physical space, you'll find that you're also creating space in your mind. You'll have more time and energy to focus on the things that bring you joy, to nurture your relationships and to pursue your passions. The Dignity of Hard Work In an age that often seeks shortcuts and instant gratification, Musonius Rufus reminds us of the timeless value of hard work. He saw hard work not as a burden, but as a fundamental aspect of a meaningful life, a path to developing character, resilience, and a sense of accomplishment. Think about a time when you truly earned something, when you put in the effort, faced the challenges, and emerged victorious on the other side. The sense of pride, the feeling of accomplishment, these are the rewards of hard work. Rufus believed that our efforts, our struggles, our willingness to persevere in the face of adversity are what give our lives meaning and purpose. It's not about seeking comfort or avoiding challenges, but about embracing the effort required to achieve something worthwhile. He argued that it's through hard work that we develop our talents, hone our skills and realize our full potential. It's through facing and overcoming obstacles that we build resilience, learn from our mistakes and become stronger, more capable versions of ourselves. This doesn't mean we should glorify overwork or sacrifice our well-being for the sake of productivity. It's about finding joy in the process, in the act of creation, in the pursuit of a goal that is meaningful to us. Identify something you've always wanted to achieve, something that truly excites you but have been putting off. Maybe it's writing a book, starting a business, learning a new language or mastering a new skill. Whatever it is, break it down into smaller, manageable steps. Start with one small action you can take today and then another tomorrow. The key is consistency to keep showing up, even when you don't feel like it, even when progress is slow. The power of self-reflection. In the tapestry of Musonius Rufus's teachings, self-reflection is the thread that weaves everything together. He believed that true self-improvement begins with looking inward, with honestly examining our thoughts, our actions and our motivations. Imagine your life as a ship sailing across the vast ocean. Without a rudder, without a way to course correct, you'd be at the mercy of the winds and currents, drifting aimlessly without direction. Self-reflection is our rudder. It's the practice of taking a step back from the busyness of life, of creating space for quiet contemplation, to examine the course we're on and make adjustments as needed. Rufus encourages us to ask ourselves difficult questions. Are our actions aligned with our values? Are we making choices that lead us towards our goals or are we being pulled off course by distractions and fleeting desires? What are our strengths and how can we leverage them more effectively? What are our weaknesses and how can we work to improve them? 
This process of self-reflection is not about self-criticism, it's about approaching ourselves with honesty, compassion and a desire for growth. It's about recognizing our blind spots, acknowledging our mistakes and learning from our experiences. Start by incorporating a few minutes of reflection into your daily routine. It could be first thing in the morning, during your lunch break or right before bed. Find a quiet space where you can be alone with your thoughts. You might start by reflecting on your day. What went well? What could have gone better? What did you learn today? What are you grateful for? You can also use this time to reflect on your goals. Are you making progress towards them? What obstacles are you facing? What adjustments can you make to get back on track? Remember, self-reflection is not a one-time event. It's an ongoing practice, a lifelong journey of self-discovery and growth. Living the Stoic Life To recap, Musonius Rufus teaches us that self-discipline is essential for achieving our goals and living a fulfilling life. His teachings emphasize self-control, embracing discomfort, living simply, hard work and perseverance, and self-reflection. By applying these principles, we can develop the self-discipline needed to overcome challenges and achieve our goals. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in learning more about Stoic philosophy or self-improvement, be sure to check out some of my other videos on this channel, and I'd love to hear from you. How do you plan to apply Musonius Rufus's teachings on self-discipline in your own life? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more content on personal growth and well-being.